dude, are you doing okay? Ah! Oh my god, your hair! I can't get the steak out! Oh, well, good thing I got with me the Gerber steak out. This steak puller is gonna be a lifesaver for you. Oh my gosh, thank you! Oh my god, it's a miracle! I can actually leave today! Thanks, man! After three days of not being able to break down camp, this backpacker was able to be reunited with his family because I just happened to have the right tool at the right time. They put an integrated hook for pulling out the stakes of your tent. What's your thought on that? Well, okay. <laughs> well, we'll take a deeper look at this stake puller in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and dive right in and see if it was able to earn its keep on my recent backpacking trip to Wyoming and see how it stacks up against other multi-tools you may be used to on your overnight adventures, like your favorite Victorinox, the Gerber NXT or Truss. Well, let's slice right into the 2.2 inch blade. It has a generous thumb hole that makes it easy to deploy. And then it has a Scandi grind in that reverse tanto shape, similar to a uh, Warren Cliff or a sheep's foot design. And it will have a sturdy liner lock, similar to what we've seen on many multi-tools throughout the years that will get the job done. It will be the only tool on this Gerber that is locking. The rest of them are a slip joint design. Now the blade shape and Scandi grind work in unison and perform really well in the case of feather stick making, carving, if you're making a tent peg, uh, notching out something, or just cutting through your backpacker meal or whatever small tasks you would be doing around a campsite that would require a knife. And I do like that Scandi grind. It's unique to the multi-tool arena right now and I'm not familiar with any other multi-tool that has this style of blade. And it would be really cool to see other outdoor focused multi-tools follow suit with similar grinds in future designs not only from Gerber but just from the industry at large. The downfall of the blade comes in the quality of steel. It dulled very quickly. And in fact, all I was able to do with this was do one feather stick and I was able to do one tent peg and then a little bit of notching and a few strokes through paracord. And by then I was already seeing rolling on several portions of the blade and was not able to keep a fine edge for any extended period of time. Now Gerber doesn't state what type of steel that they're using on this, but since it's made in China and from past experience, I would say at best it's 7CR steel and more than likely it's 5CR or even 3CR 13MOV steel, which is really disappointing because the blade shape as well as the grind that they decided to go with do work really well, but sadly you're gonna constantly have to be resharpening it with very light use based off of my model. Now for lighter cutting tasks, if you flip the tool over, you are going to get a set of scissors that are spring-loaded that will work exactly as they are intended for snipping through, say your fishing line, if you're at an alpine lake or stream, for those pesky little threads that come off of your gear or simple medical tasks that may arise. And it's nice to see scissors because not all outdoor focused multi-tools come with a pair of scissors. Now we'll follow that up on the opposite side of the tool with the awl and ferrule rod striker. Now they've given you a good size awl, much larger in dimensions than a lot that are out there. The point is sharp and will easily pierce through heavier material. And then there is a sharpened edge here, but it's more of a butter knife angle. And I actually had a lot of difficulty striking the ferrule rod off of this edge. Uh, and I actually found more success with not only just the striker that was attached to my ferrule rod, but also the back spine of the saw. The downfall of that is because the saw is a slip joint, you have to get really close to the pivot, otherwise you have a tendency to have it fail and swing back on you and possibly nick your hand. And this back portion of the spine on the saw is really one of the only non-milled rounded areas on the tool to be able to strike a ferrule rod with. Now the saw itself is again about 2.2 inches long, has a good cutout of teeth in a good pattern, so it will be able to go through whatever material you would go through to make a small notch for say a replacement tent peg, uh, or in a pinch if you had to saw off about the diameter of your thumb, piece of a branch for something that you were working on building or replacing, it would be able to do that. Because it's 2.2 inches, it is rather small, so you're just not gonna be able to span that much and is really intended for smaller notching tasks. And on the opposite side, we do have a flattened file that is attached to the body of the tool, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it's better than nothing, but you won't be able to file 
um, things that are maybe internal to something like filing out a pipe or a, a tube or something like that if you had to. So it it's better than nothing, but you're not gonna have as much usability as other files that are attached and swing open like the saw or the knife. And it's also intended for strike anywhere matches. I tried three different brands. None of them stru struck a match and struck a light off of this particular file. So it's a rough course area that you could file down something, but it, in my experience from the models that I use was not able to start a match. Then we have high-vis tweezers, which is a nice little touch. They are designed very similarly to your Victorinox or Swiss Army tweezers. Uh, function very similarly and it's nice to have that for small medical situations that arise or other things that your the dexterity of your fingers just can't do and now i know you guys are wanting to know my take on this j hook we're gonna get there in just a second the carabiner uh, is a nice touch to be able to attach to a lot of different parts and different gear items and have accessible out on your pack uh, it works well has good tension also is a bottle cap opener so if you want to open a nice refreshing beverage and their overall body is four and a half inches long and it's going to weigh 3.3 ounces so it is rather light compared to a lot of other multi-tools and when you use it the ergonomics are as you would expect um, you know it's a sharp angled abrupt transition tool uh, it feels fine for that style of tool and my hand fills it out uh, well and I can get good grip with the different tasks that I was doing for this style of tool. But even with this blade, if it did have a better steel on it to hold its edge longer, I wouldn't be sitting there for an hour, you know, carving some sort of spoon around the campfire or, you know, practicing like a wood spirit or something like that. Uh, the ergonomics aren't quite there for that, but for quick tasks, they're just fine. So now to the part of the tool that it's named after, the stake out tool or the, I would call it a J hook right there. You can see it look like a J. So uh, it's stiff in a good way and you have to kind of flex it over the, the knife pivot to get it to, or the scissor pivot to make it stay in place. So it's not going to come out unless you want it to. So that's a good thing. Uh, and you stick it like that. You have a good grip on all your fingers. So you're able to definitely get the torque that you would need or leverage that you would need to pull a stake out. But before I give you my take, I wanted to show this to my dad who's been backpacking for most of his life and see what his thoughts were on a tool feature like this. So dad, I need your feedback on this little Gerbil tool called the stake out. Okay, it's designed for backpackers. Okay. I gotta show you this little, uh, feature here. They put an integrated hook for pulling out the stakes of your tent. What's your thought on that? No well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Have you, you've been backpacking for how long? For like 30 years now, 40 years. Have you ever needed a hook to get your tent stake out? No, usually I just pull on those little <laughs> ties they have on the top with my thumb or my index finger and it pops right out. So that is not a, a tool that you go out of your way to go buy for backpacking? Not me, but I'm not very politically correct. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I mean, I could see how that would be used, but I wouldn't buy a tool because of that. So there's a take from an uh, old timer in the backpacking community. And for me, being someone who has backpacked through some of the most beautiful and rugged terrain North America has to offer over the last 10 years, I've never come into a situation where I wish I had a tool like this. Uh, I've never been in an area where for some reason I couldn't get the tent peg out um, or something like that. I mean, it does what it's designed to do. So I guess if you ever run into that or maybe you and your experience have had issues like that, well, yeah, it's gonna totally do what it's designed to do. But I will point out that the carabiner is shaped exactly like that. And in a pinch, you could just use the carabiner to hook underneath your tent stake to get it out. I really feel like it's looking for a problem that I've never come across and to me doesn't really exist. And pricing is something to consider as well. This usually goes between 45 and $55 on average, depending on where you pick it up currently when I'm making this video. And just for some perspective, this Victorinox Ranger Grip, which dwarfs this in size, goes between 50 and 60 bucks on average. And you can find smaller Victorinox that have very similar features to this Gerber for between 35 and $45 easily. If you wanted something with similar capability, but with pliers, there's the Gerber NXT, which currently is going for about 30 bucks, and the Truss, which is going for about 50. 
Now folks, throughout this video, I will have hyperlinks in the description box below for all the tools listed here today so you can take a look at what might make sense for you. Gerber did send the stakeout over to me to test, use, give you my pros, but also point out the cons and help you determine for yourself if it's the right multi-tool to take on your next backpacking or outdoor adventure. For me personally, uh, yes, the stake puller is kind of a gimmicky thing looking for a problem to solve that doesn't exist. But other than that, it honestly comes down to uh, quality of materials and compact size. If it was about an inch longer overall, uh, and if the saw locked out, and if the steel was a better steel that held its edge, I could definitely see certain people really getting some use out of this in overnight adventures. But as it sits right now, I would go with one of the Vitoric knocks that I shared with you today. So I wanna hear from you guys though, what's your feedback, what's your take on the Gerber stakeout? And if you own one particularly, what's been your experience with it? I do invite you to leave a comment, to subscribe and become a regular part of the Gideon Tactical family here. Smash that like like button and check out the other video popping up. And until next time, guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.